Uh, hello everyone, it's the D&D Theris crew, uh, Sans Jack, unfortunately, we don't know where he is at. He's all here <laughs> this morning to play D&D. A bit worried about him. We're thinking of you, Jack. Jack, if you see this, know that we love you and that we care about you. Um, but we have decided to play some of my DMing skills, which everyone here has actually played this campaign solo. And I've decided to throw all three of them in, you know, just because we all want to play. Just to break the campaign. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, okay. So, Johan, you can describe your character for me first, please. Yeah. Let me open up the character sheet. Terence is basically... Um, Terence is a big guy. He's six foot... Six foot three? Yeah. Shit. Is he six foot three? Yeah, I think he's six foot three and... 190 pounds. So he's just... The mountain of a guy. Um, he's has, he has bald hair and a bit of a beard, but not too much. Like take Alexander's beard. <laughs> That's not much of a beard, but hey, whoa, whoa, a stubble, whoa, hello, a stub <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't, I don't really beard. <laughs> um, yeah, he's dressed in brown robes, like a monk would be. He basically mm -hmm. looks like a monk. He has his big quarter staff in his hand. Looks like a monk. Wow. Is he a monk? He is not a monk. <laughs> <laughs> he is a conjurer wizard. Yep. Oh. What does that mean? Um, wizard specialized in conjuring. Well, that's uh, in, <laughs> that's, uh, that's exceptionally revealing. It basically means I get a bonus to everything to do with conjuring. Mm -hmm. And I can't do any um, greater divination and invocation. Okay. Um, Thomas, tell me a little bit, Martian. Martian, he is a one-eyed dark paladin. One-eyed simply because he rolled. He has a perception of five. <laughs> wow. So that's that's the reason why he has one eye. As a boy, like his father, cut out his eye. Um, which is a whole bit, bit backstory there for you. He stands about six foot, dirty, scrubby, blonde, dirty blonde hair, and carries them all around uh, in hide armor. And he's actually a paladin, a dark paladin to Asmodeus, uh, the devil lord of the nine hells, because someone's got to be. And yeah, he's a pretty stone cold badass. <laughs> nice. Expect expect mass slaughter of peasants. That's all I'm going to say. And for uh, <laughs> for Martin, I changed some of the rules for for Paladin since they're lawful good. I've updated it some, but we'll, we'll lawful evil. <laughs> uh, yeah. So go ahead, uh, Alex. Yeah, I am Thorin. I am a dwarf priest of war. Um, Holding I, up uh, a party by being slow. That's what you're I on. yeah, I am pretty slow. Um, <laughs> I to look at me. I am a warrior. I don't look like a priest. I tend to keep it reasonably well hidden. Um, but and I don't, I don't have a visible um, amulet to my god, Ooh. shall we say? I have black, like a black mohawk, black long black beard, um, with various silvery rings and stuff tied into it. Um, arms are covered in like warrior type rings like taken from fallen enemies cool. uh, I'm everything I'm look, I look like a warrior and I have one silver eye mm -hmm. wow. completely silver and one normal blue eye uh, yeah that's pretty much me I've got covered in scars battle wounds yeah I'm everything warrior well, I'm tall for a dwarf for an I'm tall for my race I'm tall for my race and um, I'm Big, strong, burly. I said, yeah, oh. look like a warrior, but I've got some hidden agendas past. What, weapon, sort of what weapon are you using? Oh, I'm carrying a morning star and a tower shield. Big Ooh, ass wow. shield. Big, well, not a tower shield, but a large shield. Okay. Well, what so you what should be using Martin again? A mole, which is basically, as far as I can say, like a big two handed club. So, yeah. So we have a morning star, a huge. The mall and a huge uh, quarter staff. You're so nice. Black tough, weapons, you're a no. bunch of fucking tough looking people, I say that. Um, 
All right. So are we all evil? Like, how do how do we come to be traveling to be together? Okay. So for the viewers, I will tell you a little about where they are. These guys have all heard this before. You're currently traveling. And I'll switch to the so the viewers can see my wonderful world map that I created. Um, oh wow! There's sort of symbol here. Yeah, yeah. That's added in. Jack didn't get any of this when he played. Um, yeah. So you are currently in the middle of the kingdom of Merovan. Uh, thank you, Joanne. Uh, kingdom of Merovan. Um, it is a human majority kingdom. You're in the middle of it, and the the farmland is very safe here. There's not much that happens. Um, it's the middle of winter, December the first day. Uh, you know, it's cold. The the days are short. The nights are long. But you're you're travelling nonetheless, and you're you all all have your cloaks wrapped around you as your frost comes at your breath comes out in frosty mist. Mm -hmm. Um, you have just left Hillgate. And it's like 12 hours after leaving Hillgate, mm -hmm. and you're traveling towards Martel. And why, yes, why are you guys traveling together? Where are you headed? What are you doing? Well, perhaps I have a suggestion that okay. um, a god, one of your either, <clears throat> uh, what was your god again? A Asimos. Asmodeus, Asmodeus. The deem or the devil lord of hell. Asmodeus <laughs> and the god of war have spoken to each other, and they have like. You know they've they've decided on a mission that both of you to share, and I don't know why Terence is there. I imagine they went to like the, they, they went they went to the deity Starbucks and they sat down and said, "Hey, how's it been, man? It's been such a long time. How are you doing? How is hell?" And they just got chat. It's like, okay, well, I've got this like big plan. Do you want to get involved? Like, it'd be fantastic. Well, and my like, my sort of quest and my um, objectives are there hasn't been a war in the kingdom yes. in some time. Since a great, a great beast mm. was silenced, mm. shall we say, and I am looking yeah. to bring bring back war to the land. It's been too peaceful for too long. So, Ooh. are you thinking you're going to go provoke this beast into moving from its position, it's or in? whether it's between two kingdoms, whether it's between an ancient beast or and people, ancient whether it's between Elves and dwarves. Who who is fighting is really no of no consequence to me. Yeah. I have no care for any other else other than mm. people who support my world view and my god's view. And that is the perfect sort of scenario that Asmodius and as a follower of Asmodius, I can profit in. This is a perfect sort of place. War and disgusting is fantastic. So yeah, I'm going to follow along with this. is a great idea. Let's get a war going. So you want the world mm -hmm. to fall into conflict and. Dark days yeah. to arrive and be a need yeah. of darkness. Yeah, spread over land. exactly. My, <laughs> my intention is a bit different. Um, <laughs> it's not called the one. kneeling kingdom for no reason. So, uh, yeah, Terence thinks the kingdom's weak and it has to become stronger again or falter. So, through with war. the war. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I'll tell the viewers this kingdom. <laughs> Uh, a long time ago, 200 years before any of these guys were born, before any of their parents were born, um, was uh, attacked, assaulted by an evil black dragon called Ranth. And Ranth uh, came across the kingdom and, you know, threatened it with its, its great might. And the kingdom just said, okay, we'll pay you gold every year, please don't hurt us. Um, pretty much, and avoided all conflict. But every year since, every day, uh, not every day, every year since then, they... 200 years, for 200 years they've been paying tribute to this dragon, uh, sending money and gems and wealth to the hordes. Um, yeah, okay. So how long have you guys been travelling together? Do you know each other well? Or did you just... Meet well, I can imagine. I was given like a hint by Asmodeus that I should go to a, a tavern a few towns back, and lo and behold there was someone else in a tavern, and there was another person in said tavern. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I can imagine we've only been travelling for, together for a short while. We maybe like come across a few things together, but we're still pretty much distrusting of each other, as is in our nature. Okay, so yeah. let's say like a week. In fact, okay, well, uh, okay, like a week, or we can do it. Like I was going to say, who'll get you arrived and who'll get and met in that bar? Yeah, sure. We've literally known each other just a day. Yeah, so <laughs> you all came from like three separate roads leading into Hillgate, um, yeah. and then yeah. You, hmm. you met in the tavern and you're all like so yeah Asimo just sent us here God of War sent me here whoa, 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 kingdom whoa, whoa. should be strong yay 
I don't think we're definitely with that fourth right about. Yeah. I think we just got. I probably. I may have got a feeling, like a suggestion. I pointed in the right direction from my guard that maybe are uh, these guys I need to travel with, and so I sort of got along before him. And then Terence was there, just being big and scary. And I thought, hey, it's great to have big scary guys along because they're good at smashing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So possession yourself in the roads. How you talk together? Probably. So you guys are walking. So yeah. So you're headed towards. The, the eastern border of the kingdom, that is both where Ranth lies and where there's a border in other kingdom. Um, mm -hmm. Is this the formation you guys walk in? Yep. Okay, so... Yeah, I'd imagine... I'd, I'd, obviously, I was, I'd be setting the pace, being the one that can walk the slowest, yeah, so I'd be true. up front. <laughs> and obviously Martin's got one eye, so he can't see shit. <laughs> so you've, you've actually been travelling for two days then. Um, and of I think me and Martin kind of, I think we we don't get on because that's not yeah. what, but we respect each other enough to be together. I think mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm a bit wary of Terence. I don't really know his game. Martin yeah, same here. is a very suave person uh, compared to the rest of you. He's he, when you speak to him, if he's trying to be, he would. He, he's charming. I am Martin the Silver Tongue. I yeah. can chat. I'm very charming. I can chat. I can chat the pants off the dryad. I tell you, that's a story for another day, though. Um, so yeah, you guys are second day out of Hillgate. Um, it's near an evening. Um, it's probably about four o'clock, I guess. Oh, well, no, it's two o'clock, I guess. So, it's, but even in the winter, it's getting dark. The sun sets in a couple hours. Um, you, even with Thorin's short pace, if you want to make it there in another two days, you're gonna mm -hmm. be walking quite a bit into the night um, in the dark. But for okay. Thorin, that's for Thorin, that's no problem. For the rest of you, you can't see. Um, mm -hmm. On either side of you are dead, empty fields. It's very much flat land. Uh, there's nothing planted. The hedges, there's two rows of hedges on each side of the road, mm -hmm. or on either side of the road. Dead, just just dead wood. Uh, occasionally mm -hmm. in the hedges, there's a path that goes off to what you presume to be farmhouses. Occasionally, in the, earlier on when you were walking, you could could spy farmhouses at the end of the road and other times the road just goes off beyond where you can see. Um, and at this point I'd like you all to make a perception check. Watch this guys. Let's see how low I can go. <laughs> last time I aced this. I didn't. I, I didn't see anything for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't see shit either. As I like the, the 10 plus 5 and the 5 plus 10 there, that means yeah. sweet. <laughs> uh, so Terence, you spy up in the air a carrier pigeon heading away from the oh. direction you came towards Hillgate. And it's flapping mm. its wee wings. Um, I turn to the guys and say, do any of you guys have uh, a have way a to bring, to bring kit, uh, pigeons down? I have a bow. Well, there's a carrier pigeon up ahead, so... Alright, cool. Flying overhead. You point out and they all can see oh. it. No. I'm going to try and shoot it. How <laughs> high does a carrier pigeon fly? Pretty high. 10,000 feet. <laughs> oh, see? See, if I, if I was like a female slash male wizard first level with magic missiles right now, <laughs> this would be the best thing ever. Well, I don't know. Magic missiles do have a range. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> no, they don't. Have you never heard of the magic shotgun? <laughs> the unnerved magic shotgun. How many projectiles did you have? Four? Or five? Um, it was five when we on the first session. I just went around like, boom. Five is actually level, level 10 wizard or something that like that. That was a level 10 wizard spell, yeah. yeah that, was, <laughs> that was a little bit incorrect. But hey, at the time, it was fantastic. I it don't think right. the thing on your character sheet is right. There's no way a short bow is a range of 30 feet. Alright. Let cool. me look it up. That wouldn't surprise me if I got it wrong. Master weapon list. Short bow. SSS. No, it's under B for bow. Short is 30. Yes, okay. So it's 30 squares, which is equivalent to range. A mile. Yeah, a mile and a half. <laughs> yep. 30 times 5. 150. 150 feet. I, I, I couldn't find how high, so I'm just going to say it's long range. I'm going to give it a shot. 
All right, cool. Nice. Fuck it, doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you, you aim at the carrier pigeon is flying way up ahead, and your bow, your your shot, fires up, and then it comes back down, and, and you jump out of the way. Ah! Before Shit. it, and it hits in the ground, and. I must, have, I must have curses. Ah, bastards. Town takes seven damage. Your arrow somehow remains in, uh, intact. So wow. Well, then I, I give thanks to Asmodeus for returning this arrow, and I put it away. And I feel stupid. <laughs> well, you guys can continue on your way, I presume, then. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can give it another shot if you wanted. Or do you just... Um... If I if I can I will, but once again, again. doesn't matter. Back I just I just turn to look at Martin and just sort of look him up and down and as if to say, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to shoot down the pigeon. What are you doing, dwarf? We need to we need to find someone to. to <sighs> I'm sick of this peacefulness. We need to find something to kill. What do you think I'm doing? I'm trying to kill a pigeon. <laughs> Yes, there's no honour in killing pigeons. Mr. I'm a dwarf, blah, blah, blah. There's no honour in killing pigeons. Fine, let's go find some foes. Okay, your, your second game. arrow also survives, but you'd have to go walk a bit to pick it up since now you're shooting it. Well, I go walk and pick it up because yeah. arrows are expensive. And you could pretty much catch up with me pretty easily. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> okay, yeah, you guys continue on. Um, The sun we... sets. And I presume you keep walking. Yep. And we come to a black wall of darkness. Uh, about an hour later, uh, none of you guys can see anything. We find the smiley face. <laughs> it's a it's a full moon. Um, there's no stars Ooh. in the sky, so visibility is actually quite well. And Thorin, you have a night vision of sixty feet, I believe. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I learned last time. I learned from Ulrich. I need to see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one else can can now, so... <laughs> you're the yeah, I unstring my bow, and I, I basically carry my maul in hand. For no reason, just because it's dark. We're travelling on the road, I carry my maul across my shoulder, you never know. Okay, sure. Um, You haven't seen or anyone else on the road, you imagine, because it's winter. No one's, mm. no one's out. Okay. Move yourself forward like 10 feet, Thorden. <laughs> I guess I could. Nah. And Terence oh. goes dancing into the bushes. You, <laughs> Thorin, you spy up ahead um, in the darkness, which is not much dark for you. The back of a stopped, halted wagon. Um, Martin and Terence, you guys are just, well, make perception checks. Ha. Ah. Never mind. Uh, Martin, you're still walking on, being aware. Uh, Terence, you, you too. Hello. Yep. Hello. Oh, You're frozen. This camera froze, yeah. Video. But he looks can, so delighted. He looks happy for me. Yeah, yeah. he looks so jolly. Oh. How high do pigeons fly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a, a book on there somewhere. Six yeah. miles high. Hey. Well, then you would oh. never be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe it flew like under the moon, like we could see it just briefly. There's a flew in the moon. It was during the day when you saw it. Oh, well, then we flew under the sun. We saw it. Yeah. Um, the so sun made it cast like this huge shadow oh. on the ground. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Back. You're a... What's going wrong? Your camera's turned off. Nothing. Well, this could okay. be a good time for a break. Twenty minutes of stuff. Thanks for joining us for D&D &D without a name. Um, oh, evil Ferris. Evil. Yeah, that's a good, good name. Evil Ferris. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Chrome Crash, I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Uh, join yeah. us for the next part. Of oh, Evil Ferris. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>